question, I guess, is how have you as players reflected on the result on Tuesday? Yeah, we've we've looked into it and it's it's disappointing. We wanted to have a good run in the cup. Um, they're a very good side. They were they were set up well. There was there was a lot of movement, but I never felt they were hurting us at any moment. And the goals kind of spit out of nothing. And then yeah, we reacted well. We get into a lot of great areas, and we just unfortunately never had the finish. But look, that's something we're going to keep working on. We've got a, a lot of young boys, especially in the wide areas and stuff, that are will only get better and better. And, we're working on a lot of things, so I guess reflecting on it, it's, it's disappointing about the cup, but it's like, right, let's go again. It's, it turns around quick in football, we've got a big game at the weekend, and it's kind of on to that one now. Because there were a few changes made, but it was a very tight game, wasn't it? It did feel like it was always going to be settled by that single goal. Yeah, it was. It, it was tight, and it's when you score, if you score at the right times. if you And we had chances, we had our chances. As I say, we weren't blown away, and they're a very, very good side. They've, I know they made nine changes, but their squad depth is incredible, and the players they bring in is brilliant. And it was a good game. It's disappointment because we need to get that win at home and, and for the fans. And But yeah, we, we, we don't want to win any game, so it was it was disappointment in the end. I was speaking to the manager about this, about that, that home form. It does feel like a bit of an Achilles heel. Are you guys as players sort of aware of it, and have you discussed it between yourselves? We've not really had like an in-depth chat about it, but for example, before the game, Kingy kind of got us in a huddle and he said, right, let's let's get this first big one at home. We can build momentum for there and we can go for there. So it's been mentioned and we know it's important to go and, to go and win at home, kind of make it a fortress, make it a horrible place to come. And look, we are trying to do that. Unfortunately, a couple of moments haven't went our way and a couple of disappointing performances where we've not quite been at it, but it's a long season and yeah, we'll keep wanting to get it right. Can you pinpoint exactly what the difference is when you're at home? Because you're creating the chances, just can't quite find the back of the net. Yeah, the, unfortunately I can't. It's, it is a, it's a difficult one. You can look into all the tiny little bits and the teams, when they're playing at home, come at us more and it allows us maybe more space for our players who are quicker to run in behind. Do we need to be better in possession with the ball and, and less sloppy and really work teams to give it away? There's, there's so many different factors you can look at because ultimately if you're playing at home and you're not scoring goals and it stays nil-nil, it gets a bit more edgy, the fans get edgy, us as defensively, a unit as a team we get a bit edgy because we've not quite scored here and one goal can be detrimental and we can lose. And There's a number of factor of things but unfortunately yeah, we can't quite put a finger on it. I think what we need to just keep doing is working on the training ground to be better every day, whether it is in possession, whether if teams come and sit in a low block, we can break them down. If they come on us, we can be better in behind. We've just got to keep improving at everything so that when teams come and they play against us, no matter what they do, we've we've got an answer for it. So on the flip side, I guess it's good that you're, you're back away from home. It's going to be a tough game at Swansea. They're still waiting for their first win, but you must be going into that with a bit of confidence. Yeah, look, we've, our, our past past two performances, we came up against a really top Hull side, uh, in my opinion, I think they've improved a lot, um, how they were set up was was excellent, that was a really tough game, and yeah, we were disappointed with the draw to be honest, we thought we should have got the win, so we, we performed really well in that game, the Norwich game, it's two games in however many days, it was a decent enough performance, but disappointment not getting the win, now we get into this game, we should be confident, we're coming up against a good side, but Every game we, we look to win, our, our previous away games have been top performances, so yeah, we're in a good space going into it, but we need a positive result going into the break. Are you expecting a sort of different challenge from Swansea this year? They've obviously changed their manager from Russ Martin to, to Michael Duff. What are you expecting from them? Um, it'll probably be today or tomorrow that we'll watch them more in depth, to be honest, um, in the meeting. The managers take a meeting and we'll go into their strengths and, and, and weaknesses if we've got any. And probably see a bit more on them then but I'd be surprised if they were Russell Martin was was very extreme in how he played and not not a lot of other managers play like that so I'd be surprised if they were that extreme with it but they're still good players they would have learned a lot under Russell Martin and what to do so and and, and the manager that's went in there now is a great manager so yeah they'll they'll, they'll pose they'll pose threats to us but as we will to them. And on a personal note how are you enjoying being back in, in defence, you've uh, been one of the more versatile players. Are you enjoying playing back in that centre back role? Yeah, yeah, I, I love it. Look, I just love playing football, but ultimately that is my my position. That's my favourite position. That's where I love to play. That's where I believe I can have the best impact on the team. But I, again, as I've said in a million interviews, it's it's not me that decides. It's the manager, and ultimately, 
he's my boss and it's his decision. Whatever he tells me to play, I'm going to try and do the best for the team. But yeah, it is where I feel where I feel more comfortable, and uh, I believe I can be have the best impact on the team. And just lastly, going into the first international break, how important is it to get that good result ahead of that one? Yeah, it's huge. It is, it's so huge. It affects it affects everything. I, I know it's the same with fans, but as players, when you when you lose a game, that the days after are horrible, and you're just thinking, get me to that next game to try and put it right. And international breaks are tricky that way because if you have a bad result, you end up sitting on it for for a week, two weeks, and disappointment, and it can ruin your mood in that in that time. So it's important that. We're at a stage now where I win in it and we'll look at it and go, right, we'll, we're happy with the start. We've got a lot to improve on, but we're happy where we sit and a loss will be be a bit and it'll leave a, leave a bit of taste going into the break. So we know it's, it's a big game for us. Thanks for coming. Good luck. Thank you. On the centre-back um, thing, you, you tend, well, when you're at Luton and when you came here, you tended to be in a three. Yeah. That's fair, isn't it? And now, now you're in a two. Um, how different is that for you? Uh, there's not much difference to be honest. It's the same. Keep the ball out of the net and, and try and help help the team build up play, communicate to others around you. It's it's the same same kind of principles. And when I first started playing centre half, I played under Paul Cook at Wigan, and the system was a four two three one. So I played probably my first 50, 60 games at centre half, and I back four, so left left centre half. Um, so it's not that I've not played there. I, I enjoy it. You need to be. I don't know if you need to be focused a bit more. It's just there's that responsibility. It's like you and whoever you're with, me and Big Rob Dickey, me and Zach, me and whoever, whoever I would maybe play that role with. It's like it's used to against everyone. You just need to keep the ball out of the net. And I, and I enjoy that as much as I do enjoy playing the three. And yeah, it's, it's different, but it's a lot of things are the same. Do you have to rein in some of your attacking instincts, if that's the right term? Do, do, do you not, can you not be quite as adventurous on the ball as perhaps you would normally be? Um, you're travelling with it, not necessarily passing, but when you're yeah, travelling with it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I don't know, uh, potentially. I think that comes from what's wanted from you. If, if, if it's wanted for you to keep it a wee bit safer, if we're playing tactically a little bit different, or if it's wanted for you to you be the one to go and express, and there's always ways. We, we play where I hold the midfielder, Matt James, or Andy King the other night, and Andy King knows my game, so he said to me straight away, if you ever step forward, step forward confidently and I cover in for you, which is which is great for him to have that relationship with me where he knows my strengths and he wants me to go and explore my strengths and he can cover for me in that area. And that's good, that's what teammates do, that's what good teams do. And so I don't feel it's it's took away from me, but but yeah, I feel that the way I play and the risks that I take, uh, you need to be safe sometimes because you don't want to make mistakes, but at the same time, a way, a way that, that I don't enjoy playing football, football one or I don't feel that is the best version of me. So it's, that's why I, I still will try and take risks. Your passing at Hull, there were some outrageous ones where I thought that you, and I mean that, sorry. Yeah, no. like yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, is that something you work on or is it, as in, do you go on the training ground almost like golf shots, like playing passes or is it just your, just, just something that you do? Yeah, I think my full life I've worked on it, like my f especially more when I was younger, I would go out, I remember a boy who doesn't play football now, but Darren Cole, we can throw at Rangers together and every training session we would go out an hour before and you were only allowed to hit one left, one right, one left, one right, one left, one right, you couldn't hit the same two in a row and just start practising since I was a kid, more and more now as you get older it's harder, sometimes you have aches and pains, but whenever I feel fresh at the end of the session I'll I'll hit as many as I can, and, but it, it just, it's there, I know it's there, it comes back to me and in a game, it's some I get wrong, but some I get right. And, and, that's, that, that, and that's the long ones, the long, the long range ones, long the distances. Yeah, ultimately I'm just trying to play passes that hurt defenders, I, I've played in an attacking position, I know what attackers want, you don't, you don't want the ball, well then you've got to go and make something happen and try and beat three, four people, so if I've got a relationship with my right winger, with my striker, with my left winger, that if they make penetrating runs that I can potentially try and find them that will lead to a goal, then I believe that's a strength. And you're not going to get that. If I got 10 out of 10 right, I would be at, I don't know, Real Madrid. But so, you, so you're going to make, you're going to get them wrong sometimes. And it's just about trying to get 
when you do get it right, hopefully it leads to a big chance for the team. So you've got the right kind of attackers to aim for at this club in terms of uh, their attributes? Yes, they're, as I say, they're incredible. Um, making runs, they're relentless, their fitness levels are up through the roof, so they're always going to be giving me that option. They're always going to be running in behind, they're always going to be giving me something to look for. There's, there's certainly no lazy players at this club that when you get the ball, they'll, they'll shy away or maybe positionally we can work on a few things where how do you create the space sometimes when it's not there you need to shuffle them you need to move them around and that, that is what we're working hard at in the training pitch every day but yeah I've, I've got players that if my passing's good enough then I, I should be able to find them sorry to get sort of go back because i appreciate you want to look forward but how annoying was the summer for you yeah that was that was frustrating it was really frustrating obviously last year but bit frustrating um, and then in the off season I was I worked really really hard I was I sacrificed a lot still enjoyed my family time but I made a lot of sacrifices to get in the best shape that I could and I came back feeling feeling really good feeling brilliant and pre-season was tough as it always was and on the last day in Austria I got a slight nick in my quad which but to be fair it Injuries are a part of it and it gave me two or three weeks out. I, I didn't miss much. I've came back. I feel good. The only game I missed was Preston. It wasn't like last year where I got injured and then I came back too early and had to take a setback, setback. It was right. It was done and dusted in three weeks and I feel in a great place now to go forward and help the team. Um, so yeah, I've been back since after Preston, which is to miss one game was disappointing, but I'm back now and I feel good. Because in, in terms of the match fitness, because obviously you didn't have a pre-season where you could work on that yeah. success. Do you feel, and it certainly looks like you do, but do you feel in a position where you now can play Friday, Tuesday, Saturday quite, you'd be fine within yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel, I feel good. My body feels good. It was, I think getting that, you can never replicate it in training. So you can do extras and you can do as much running about as you want, but you can never replicate digging in in that game, digging in when it's getting tough, balls into your box last 15, 20 minutes. And I'd done that against Hull. It was a really tough game. It was a good game for me to come through as well. And the fact that I came through it, got turned around quickly straight into the, the game the other night and then played 90 minutes in that game. So I feel I've, I've got that out of my system now. I feel good. I'm doing everything recovery-wise to make myself right. And if I'm needed on Saturday, then... My body will be in absolute perfect condition to play. Um, you've obviously known Jack for a reasonable amount of time. How, how have you kind of got on the role yeah. since he came to the club? Yeah, brilliant. He's great, great lad, first and foremost. Obviously, I'd played against him a million times. And when I heard that the club were in for si uh, signing him, I was excited as anyone because I've always, always liked him, liked what he's about. I feel one of his massive strengths is on the ball, how he sees a pass, how he how we can create chances by breaking lines and that's something I've always admired for playing against whatever team he's been at. So as soon as we got him, I thought, great signing, a lot of championship experience, good age. He's, like, he's, he's a really good guy, I'd never met him before, but now that I know him, really good guy, leader, speaks up, is good for the people around him. So he'll be a great asset to the club. What's kind of, we, we often sort of ask our manager this, this question, he's kind of the one who has to relay it a lot What's your kind of expectations for the season, um, given you've been around the league for a fair amount of time? You kind of know how to be successful in the championship and how sometimes it's sometimes a struggle in the championship, but within the kind of the squad you're operating in, the way the club's set up, what, what do you think is kind of realistic for everyone to be aspiring yeah. to? Yeah, yeah it's, it's such a tough question. It's a good question because as footballers, you sit and you, we speak to each other and we say we should be top six. Why not? That's got to be our aim, that's got to be our goal. Uh, I would feel if I sat there and said to my fellow teammates who are younger than me, oh, let's just try finish this position or that. So that's your instant. But as I sit back and I look at it and I'm older and, and I look at the, the squads that they've got, it's sometimes, it's a very hard position that you sit in because I want to sit here and say to you, who aims top six, which it is, but you then put that pressure on yourself. You put that pressure on young lads when maybe the, maybe the, Maybe the strength and depth isn't there to do that, but then you're given that expectation to fans, and then when you lose the odd game, or you lose, a, or you're in a bad spell, it becomes well, you told me you were, you were top six, which, so it's really tough. I think our squad right now, we've got a few injuries. It could be stronger. We've lost 
since I signed for the club, the key players we've lost is you're looking at Semenyo, you're looking at Ali Scott. These are two of the best players in the championship. Which we have signed good players, but you need that squad battling. You're always going to get injuries. Right now, we're unfortunate with injuries. We're sitting with one fit number nine, who's an incredible number nine in Naki Wells, but it's still one fit striker. It's 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 tough. But what we've got amazing, we've got an amazing club, we've got amazing facilities, we've got an amazing group of players, staff, all working in the right direction. I know that's a bit of a rant on, but yeah, I, we want to improve on last year and ultimately how we train every day, how we demand for each other, how we push for each other will be behaving like a team that wants to achieve that top six. That is for sure. Whether we've got enough strength and depth to do that will we'll remain to be seen. Just on the number nine, I mean, how many times have you shown everyone your goal against Oxford? The Oxford goal, yeah. yeah. Um, to be honest, yeah, I have watched it back. Yeah, I've I seen it back once or twice, but... Just once or twice? Yeah, back in the day I used to I used to watch it a lot, but, but that's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not your job anymore. So it, but it was nice to score, especially coming, coming back, back yeah. and then finding myself in an area and scoring, it, it was nice. I need to get a league goal though, I, I believe I've scored twice in the, the cup now. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd be delighted if I can get my first league goal. Nice one, thank you so much. Man. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Uh, you mentioned the, the change a few months over the summer and going back to last season really, I just wonder, were there any key individual players that really kind of encouraged you and kept you believing that you would be back and it would be all right? Um, yeah, probably. Like, probably the lads that you're injured with, like Kane Wilson that was here before. I was I was tight with Kane and he was always in the gym and I seen how he worked when he was injured and that, that boy works. Like, when he's injured, he had a great attitude. Um, didn't work out from here, but that's fine. That happens in football. Young Eamon Benarus, another lad that when I was having my problems last year, I would look at him and I would see him with a smile every day in his face and I would say, that's how you behave, look at how that young lad's dealing with it. And there's always people about you that, that inspire you every day with how they behave, how their attitude towards life, towards being injured. And yeah, a Eamon Benarus was, was a huge one. I looked at him and he got injured and then he got injured again. And just how he was, how he lifted himself right back up, was good with everyone around him, was smiley. And that's what I mean about leaders at a club. You don't need to be 30, 31, 32, 35. You, you can be the 20-year-old lad that carries himself in the right way. And we, we are fortunate enough to have a lot of good young players. So Eamon was big for me being injured. Obviously, the staff, the physios were amazing. But in terms of looking at players and how they behave, then young Eamon Benarus, yeah. Yeah, I, I know how tough it is, and I know how t I know what they're going through. It's it's, it's horrible, and it's it's hard finding that balance because I used to like it when somebody would check on it me and say, "How are you, big man? How's it going? Keep grafting, keep your head down. You'll be back stronger." And I liked that, but every other day when someone's saying to you, "How long you got? When you going to be back?" When it's like, right, but just give me my time. Like I'll I'll be back in time when it's when this is right. So it's just trying to get that balance, but. Yeah, just just being good with them. I'm I'm always I'm always there for them. I speak to everyone every day at the club, checking in on how they are, trying to make them laugh, make them smile, whatever it may be. So, yeah, the lads the lads that are injured know that I'm I'm there for them. Um, just over a year since you signed here, obviously had a bit of a frustrating frustrating year. But in terms of how you settled into the area and stuff like that, how, how is it kind of a year on? Yeah, amazing. Thanks. Like off off the bat, amazing. Love Bristol. Love the place. Uh, Kids are really happy, family's really happy. Football, um, if I kind of assess how that's went, it's, I came here and I believe the team improved. We got a better position, we were better, but not where we want to be and, and that's obvious. So disappointing in that sense. Picked, had the first tough spell in my career in terms of injuries. I've been lucky enough never to have them. and So yeah, there was just a lot to overcome, but it, that's life and it makes you stronger and now we're going to go forward and, and try and make it even more, more a success. Yeah, to talk about going forward, uh, an exciting player, although you recently issued uh, S. Andy Burris, had a few really positive cameo appearances. I just wonder what you've kind of seen from him in games and in training that has 
Yeah, he has, he has. How he came on the other night, it was electric and brilliant. And it's hard, you don't want to put too much pressure on him. He's a young lad learning his way, but he is how every young lad should be. He comes down to the first team, keeps his head down, and just, just works. Works harder than anyone, grass. What I like about him is he doesn't show the first team players too much respect. You get young lads that come down, and when a first team player's got the ball, they're a little bit hesitant to tackle them or fully go in because apparently they're a first team player that you can't tackle and we uh, Fran goes through boys, he, he, he works, he, he pulls you, he's all arms, he's, I don't know how many times he's elbowed me and I like that fair player, he's just like I'm going to be a success and that's it and no one's stopping me and so I love his attitude so to see him come on the other night and now getting the accolades for that performance is amazing but I don't know him as well um, but just looking at him and how he carries himself I don't think he'll let that get to him he knows he's got a long road ahead of him and he'll just keep his head down and working hard as he has been doing since pre-season and I'm, I'm sure he'll be a massive uh, success. Thank you.